It's time for Side Schoolers on ScrewAttack.com with me, Stutter and Craig. Hey, Mr. Donut Head Man, who's trying to kill you? I don't know, but you better not. And Daily Destin. This town needs an enema. <laughs> and this week's special guest, Chad. Wow. You're amazing, dude. Thanks. And now, broadcasting from the World Screw Attack oh, headquarters in Dallas, oh, Texas, great. it's the Side oh, Scroller. Oh, oh, welcome out to Side Scrollers on ScrewAttack.com. What is going on, everybody? Hey, hey. I'm Stuttering Craig. I'm Daily Destin. And I'm Chad. Joining us this week for the next 30 to 45 minutes, it will be absolutely awesome. The most exciting 30 to 45 minutes of your week. Okay, probably not, but it's still going to be pretty damn awesome. I liked your crusty intro. You said, hey, hey. Hey, hey everybody. Uh, yeah, man, Krusty the Clown, great guy. There you go. Not, not too many great games, but a uh, great guy. Yeah. <laughs> Bringing it back to video games there. You yeah, I did that. Game. Yes, Krusty's uh, Funhouse. Funhouse. On the yeah. Super Nintendo and Genesis and such, yes. Uh, it's like a puzzle game, kind of like Lemmings, but whatever. I like the Mario Mini Dash, whatever they have now on the DS. Whatever. <laughs> Let's talk Simpsons arcade some game. stuff. That's the only one I know. All right. All that from the intro. Yes. Lots and lots of stuff going on today. We have the launch of Death Battle, which uh, has been really great. Yeah. People have really enjoyed it and such. Mm-hmm. Uh, and remember, that episode was made like a year ago, <laughs> literally. Uh, it, you know, we pretty much just polished it up for the launch and, and, and redid it for HD. But everything like was pretty much done like a year ago for that thing. And, uh, you know, so, you know, expect more... Ex- uh, the second fight, I can tell you, is is pretty pretty damn epic. Yes. I love the the teaser. Thank you. I hadn't yeah. seen the teaser, and then I saw it, and I was like, whoa, that's really cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. In case you can't figure it out, uh, that is Akuma versus Shang Tsung mm-hmm. in the second match. Shang Tsung from Mortal Kombat. All right. Uh, also, uh, all next week, it'll be the saggy 2010 nominations on Screw Attack to find yeah. out what the shitty-ass game of the year nominees are. There was a lot of uh, discussion in the forums, a lot of nominees, where we've broken it down to uh, between four, three and four for each category. You'll find out who they are, and you'll be able to vote starting next week. Um, also, a brand new Talking Classics on Thursday uh, on Ico, or Eco, however you... I always called it Ico, but well, he calls it Eco. Keith says Eco. This so, is true. Yeah. And Keith has a hot girl in his video, so yeah, what do you say does. about that? All right. Smoking. It's pretty right. awesome video. Uh, also, the tester commentary coming up on Friday, which uh, we haven't watched the episode yet, but we hear there's a lot of drama. drama. That's right. So uh, we'll see. That was nice. Apparently, uh, that's the universal inflection for drama, because we both drama. drama. <laughs> you want to try Destin? No. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. No. No, I do not. <laughs> uh, we have the foreign questions this week, the Side School News Desk, the middle segment this week. We're going to be talking about, well, it's kind of the Christmas season. We're past Halloween, but it's the ghost of Christmas past, ghost of Christmas future and all that stuff. We're going to be talking a ghost encounter, ghost encounters, because I uh, I had a brush with ghostness this weekend, which I will be interested to talk to you guys about. Nice tie-in for relevance there. Yeah, Christmas, <laughs> Christmas season. ghost of Christmas. I was really trying. We're going to talk about ghosts. We're going to talk about ghosts. <laughs> Whatever. All right. Um, anything else you guys want to touch on before we get rolling? No. no. I'm good. Okay. We don't take breaks this week. Uh, it's time for my favorite segment, your favorite segment, everybody in the world's favorite segment. It's time for Hard News. All the day's news from this past week. It's time for Hard News. All right, this dawn. Well, uh, so Fallout New Vegas came out. It was pretty buggy. Yeah. Well, now it's getting a comprehensive patch to fix a lot of the big bugs that uh, people have been encountering. Oh, I thought they straightened that out. I yeah, heard from th- people they, playing it. They put on an early one, but they're doing another one, a comprehensive patch, that uh, it's going to be going to all the consoles, like PS3, 360, and Steam, and uh, soon. Anyway. Well, that's good. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, um, and people have brought this up in videos before in the past, on like video game vaults and such, that a lot of these videos uh, will glorify bugs and things like that. Especially, mm-hmm. you know, think about like Mario, like Super Mario Brothers, where you can like run through the wall, or the Minus World, or you, you know, various bugs like that where you... Red Dead Redemption. 
Yeah, well, I was more entertained watching the bugs from that game than the actual we, game. We know you love your Red Dead Redemption bugs, but I'm talking like old school bugs. People like embrace that stuff. They love yeah. it. They're like, oh, so cool. Check this out. Look at this bug I found. And now, sometimes nowadays, they're really funny, like in Red Dead Redemption. Mm -hmm. In Fallout New Vegas, when it your game slows down to five frames per second, that's not that's not a fun yeah, bug. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Know? I, I just so. think it's it's amazing how we, we just over time. We've kind of glorified these glitches and bugs and such in old school games, and you know. Yeah, if it helps, it's sure. Look what I can do. But if it doesn't, it's this is bullshit. It's bullshit, man. <laughs> and plus, games where you know, nowadays, glitchy games affect things like multiplayer and things like that, which mm -hmm. you know suck. So. Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, good for Fallout New Vegas. Have you played it yet, Destin? You're a big Fallout guy. Yeah, dude. I almost I did an armory on it. Remember? Yeah, yeah. Did you beat it though? No, I didn't because uh, I started <laughs> the ending. And it's like mission one, and then it starts a whole new tier, and I was like, oh, okay, I'm done. I'm like 30 hours into this okay, game. Okay, so you didn't really want to keep going. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was walking. I walked in when Dustin was uh, playing it for the armory, and then like his character just froze, and he's like, oh, and yep, it's doing this again. This is what I you said you had some name for it, like I don't even know, but it's just everything locks up and stops, and then he would just turn it off, like he'd done it like three times before. Just yeah. Well, you were a huge fan of three, so how's it, how did yeah. it fare to three? Uh. I thought the pacing was a little off. Oh, that's right. I didn't that's feel right. like you the characters were dull. That's right. So I did a review on it. A that's while right. Back, I remember now. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's been a while. Videos get jumbled in the old data database, data brain, <laughs> whatever. All right, what else? Okay, um, apparently th there's multiplayer coming to Dead Space 2. A lot of people know this already. But mm. according to the, the producer, Steve Papustis, Pap whatever. Steve. <laughs> yeah, Steve. Uh, Steve. He said it was the most requested feature from the fans. Well, that really? makes sense. Like, really? For like, what I like about Dead Space is like the isolation and like, like stuff scaring the hell out of you. Uh -huh. right. You know, and like, well, I, I didn't really think like I need multiplayer in this game. That would be so cool. That that's gonna be. I yeah. mean, people request people multiplayer are. for Mario. I mean, come on. You yeah. know, like th that's just how it is now. You need multiplayer. You need online multiplayer. If even mm -hmm. if you, if if you have a single player game. It's not worth Fallout, sixty bucks. It's I, don't, a, you know? I don't think Fallout needs multiplayer. Well, you're you're one of the few. And but then they, it could be an MMO. Th there are few exceptions. They actually were working on a Fallout MMO. See, there, there you There are a few yeah, exceptions. So. There are a few exceptions. But I think just in general, gamers today think that if it doesn't have multiplayer, that sixty dollars to pay for a game is is not appropriate. Which I think is okay, whatever. I mean, I I don't necessarily agree with that, but I think that's just the mindset. That if you if you're gonna have a game, it's gonna have sixty dollars. It needs to have multiplayer involved. And I don't know. I, I I can absolutely see that being the most requested thing. Even though, you know, it's not gonna be like, you know, modern warfare or anything or Black Ops where they're just running around busting a cabin and everything. Maybe it's something like uh, Assassin's Creed where you got to be stealthy and and hide and things like that. You know? Yeah, Assassin's Creed is pretty unique multiplayer wise. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I haven't really played anything like it before. So yeah. So you never know what they're gonna do with it. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. What else? Last story. Uh, according to EA, offline games are finished. So what? Yes. Yeah, uh, they believe that uh, they're just gonna. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the detailed description that, there. All right. Yeah. That about sums it up. Offline games meaning like, uh, like everything on the Wii. Everything's gonna go like multiplayer and like there's not gonna be any offline games. Everything's gonna have an online component. <laughs> Further proving my theory that exactly what I just said. <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty amazing. I can't believe a big company. Well, EA is known for making pretty big statements like that. Yeah. And you know, if so, if a company's gonna make it, make a statement like that, it's gonna be EA or Activision because they're the two big dogs right now. You know. Yeah. So if if they're gonna say something like that, they are probably gonna back it up also. Hmm. Technically, that's, I that's mean, pretty much their only statement. Like that's all they said. Uh, they're interested in moving the conversation towards. How we make connected gameplay, uh, be it cooperative or multiplayer, but uh, I don't know. Saying saying it's done, yeah. Like I, I think it's too early to say I something's think, yeah. done. A game could could succeed without it, but if you think about it, it's kind of a pretty safe statement for them to make, just for the fact of like every game has some tie into the internet. Yeah, you know, In like whether it's perform. scores or something. Like mm -hmm. I don't remember the last game that didn't have it. You know, Mario. It, well, a, pretty much everything on the Wii. Pretty much everything on the Wii has, you That's know, true. very, very limited mm. internet connection. But I think with a company like EA, you know what? If, if they're going to say something like that, and they're going to say every game has some sort of internet connectivity. Even Assassin's Creed 2 is you play, which does connect with the internet. So, Well, you know, if yeah. they're going to say stuff like that, then uh, how about uh, back it up? And with something like NBA Jam, 
do what I've been asking for for a long time and have updated rosters. You know, update your rosters and whenever a trade goes down or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Make that stuff downloadable. That's the kind of stuff you're interested in talking about. But uh, I found it kind of interesting that they're saying, like, offline games are finished. Dead. You know, it's like, not. it's... Maybe, no, I don't think so. Maybe if they say <laughs> yeah. offline yeah. games are finished in the next decade yeah. or five years, yeah. maybe. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, you, you got services like OnLive coming out that are mm -hmm. geared entirely towards online gameplay, yeah. you know. Uh, so. Steam. By the way, how is, uh, how's OnLive doing? They don't have any new games. Like, their newest game is, like, Borderlands from last year. And yeah. They need to, if they updated their... I'm interested in it. I'm legitimately interested in it, but uh, they really need to update their uh, roster of titles. I think it's hard because when I talked to them at E3, the one thing that really stuck out in my mind without OnLive was that the developers had to make a game strictly for OnLive. So it's not just like a port of the PlayStation 3 or 360. Well, it's a port, but it's made specifically for OnLive. Mm -hmm. So... That's definitely going to slow it down. Yeah, that slows things down considerably. It's not just a you know 360 game, you know that you can just plug your 360 controller into your computer and play. Right. No, it is straight online game. So, anyways. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'll definitely slow down. Hmm. All right. Uh, so that is our news for this week. Yes. It was a slow news day. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Well, yeah. well, I know we're all gearing up for the VGAs coming up this weekend. Woo, whatever. Bunch mm. trailers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why would you go to that? I don't know. Yeah, I really, I don't know, honestly. I, I know, I know. Uh, Keith Apicary may be making an appearance. Uh, <laughs> he lives there, but but on the red carpet though. And I, I when I was talking to uh, Keith last night, he was uh, he said in his slurred voice that he doesn't really know uh, how much fun he can have there because it's pretty much just interviews. And he was told that if he does anything bad, bad things will happen. So <laughs> I don't know if, uh, <laughs> if, if if Keith will be uh, making an appearance as well as he. You, you never know though, because we. <laughs> You never know. No, That's no, the, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty positive on this one. Trust me. The the way, <laughs> yeah, it, it was like I just took away his Dreamcast. He was very serious about it. So, <laughs> all right, let's move on from hard news. All right, um, okay. So this weekend, we are gearing up for the holiday season. It is a few weeks till Christmas. Um, crazy. Yes, it, this seems Here like 2010 just went crazy fast, but. Um, as we gear up for Christmas and, and the holiday season, uh, something that is starting to pop up are holiday parades. And uh, I actually, um, my wife uh, has been a part of a holiday parade since she was just a kid because her mom organized one of the major uh, parades in downtown, um, in downtown Dallas for a long time, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like the kickoff of the holiday season, right? So we stayed um, this weekend to, uh, down on Friday night down at the Adolphus Hotel, down in downtown Dallas. Do you guys know anything about the Adolphus Hotel? No. Have you ever heard that before, Adolphus? No. No? Uh, how about Anheuser, like Adolphus Bush? I've heard of Anheuser Bush. Well, there's Adolphus, Adolphus. Hey, is that that place that's haunted? No, 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 Adolphus, uh. Uh, who's the beer guy? Adolphus. Uh, Anheuser? That's Anheuser Bush. No, well, there, uh, there's Adolphus something. Anyways, he was one of the big beer guys. Right? Okay. And he. Adolphus Bud Light. <laughs> Bach? I don't know. Is no, it, his name was Adolphus. Adolf I think it was Adolphus Bush. I don't. I don't remember. But, um, anyways, he he built this hotel in Dallas in like 1912, and it was like the pinnacle. Like all the Hollywood starlets came down, and they did this. They came there and danced, and the Queen of England stayed there, and it was like a really oh, high-profile place, right? Okay. So, any any time you've been around for almost a hundred years, um, there's bound to be some stories and such, right? Right. So we were actually, uh, I've heard, you know, some things about it. And while we were down there, I decided to do a little bit of investigating. And, and I asked, I, I <laughs> Investigating. Investigating. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my, my inflection was off there. Uh, investigating. And I asked my wife's mom if she could tell me about the story. And she doesn't believe in it. She doesn't really, she's never really adhered to it. And she worked there for like 20-something years, right? Mm -hmm. But she always heard about it. So the story goes like this. On the 19th floor of this building, back in the 20s, uh, the 19th floor was like the top, and that's where the ballroom was. Okay. Now, since then, they've, over, they've built over it, and they've added a couple more floors, but the 19th floor was the top. So apparently in the 20s, this lady was stood up at the altar, and she, she then went and hung herself. So now what they say is um, the 19th floor is haunted, right? And you can hear... Uh, you know, uh, you'll occasionally hear a bride, or you have cold spots, or something like that, or you'll hear 
Uh, Can you explain how you hear a bride? <laughs> well, she'll, she'll be like screaming, oh, okay. you know, and things like that. <laughs> um, but you can also go up to the old ballroom. The old ballroom is still there. It's just built around, right? Okay. So uh, the old ballroom's still there, and it's just you know it as the floor now has like insulation on it for the for the floors below it, 18th and 19th floors below it, right? Right. Uh, but it still has all the old architecture and such. And I was talking to her dad, and her dad said he's actually been up there. They actually took a tour up there. And when you're in there, and he, he says he doesn't believe in ghosts, but he, but he knows what he heard, right? He went up there, and he says you can hear people, like, commensurating, and you can hear music, like, just, like, old-timey music, like you're in the ballroom and such. He said you can hear it really faintly, right? Uh -huh. So this, I'm freaked the fuck out. <laughs> like, like, I am absolutely intrigued by this, but... I'm, I'm, we're staying on the 15th floor, and I don't want anything above going above there, because I'm like, I am done. Because, really? Because I, I, <laughs> I then spent the next hour and a half doing research, and there's actually a video on YouTube of the 19th floor elevators just going crazy shit, open and closing, going crazy. Okay. And, and these kids shot it on their cell phone, and their phones were going off and such. So I, was, I, I saw that, and I was like, no, uh-uh. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere near this. So finally, yeah, see? Do a little research. That's it right there. The Adolphus Hotel. Type in Adolphus Hotel Dallas Ghost. Yes. And look on uh, the Haunted Elevators. Check now. Check this out. We're going to watch this video real quick. And you guys tell me. I know this is an audio medium. But uh, what you're looking at, are you looking at these? The elevator doors just opening and closing sporadically, just going nuts. They're just opening and closing. And the, the, the phone is ringing for no reason. And they're just opening fast and closing fast. And it's like, why is this happening? Who knows? Lights are just going off. But this whole thing got me, like, freaked out. Absolutely freaked out. Okay. That wouldn't be that hard to do, dude. Yeah, that's what I was but, but the thing is, there's there's glass behind. When you look in the elevators, there's glass. You, so there's nobody behind press, pressing them, right? Two people. One person on the floor above, one person on the floor below. Somebody calls the phone. But why would they – I mean, why would somebody want to orchestrate that and put it on YouTube for something that's going to get, like, 1,500 views? Yeah. You know? Like, that's, that seems really pointless. So, gotcha. It freaks you because out. Because kids Anyways, think they're fun. So, yeah, I, I, I'm freaked out. And finally, on the last day... Like, oh, yeah, look, they stopped because the people got tired of pressing the button. <laughs> okay, you're obviously a skeptic. <laughs> you're obviously a skeptic. But this is the first time, like, I've, I've never encountered any sort of... Bah! <laughs> oh, he jumped! <laughs> he I did jumped! Jump. <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting you to scream in my face. <laughs> yeah, I jumped. Dude, it. hey, uh, I'm sorry any G1s who listen to this on their iPod in their car. So, <laughs> yeah. just did. Ah! Yeah. Oh, I'm just going like, oh, what? <laughs> Thing. Good job, Destin. You gotta think of died. That's or good. somebody's sitting at work, you know, just like doing whatever. They're go, and they just jump out of their chair. Anyways, <laughs> you <Anyway>. ass. <laughs> so, you on, didn't on, jump on the final chat. day, on the final day, we actually went up to the 19th floor, and I'm like tiptoeing through there. <laughs> I because I saw this other video online of this, this, these ladies getting a tour, and they feel a cold spot and such, you know. And you can never know; it's just a video online and such. But, uh -huh. anyways. So I was really intrigued with this stuff, and I, and I totally believe in ghosts, and I totally believe in aliens and all that stuff, because I think it's really naive to think that we're the only people living in this planet, on this art, in this universe. Well, let's not galaxy. even get off on but aliens. Whatever. Okay, whatever. <laughs> but whatever, ghosts. So Craig after hippie. telling the story for six minutes, are there any ghost stories that you guys have run into? Because I know, Chad, you said you've run into Oh, some. definitely. Okay, but, uh, so do tell. Did something happen while you were there, though? Or? It more so just spooked me more than anything. Okay. And, and it was just kind of like, I'm just really sleeping weird. at night. You keep looking around the room. Well, like. because I've watched, I've watched, uh, I've watched stuff. You know, those shows on TV and such. Ghost and, and designed, Did you feel like a hand on your shoulder? No, no, no. Breath but, and on but the back of your neck. But there are reports of that stuff. That, I mean, there are reports in the hotel. And if you do some research on it, like there's guys who say that that stuff's happened to them. But quit smiling. This is, <laughs> look, you believe this, I believe that. But at the end of the day. You know, it's it's just really kind of, it's just eerie to me. You know, yeah. just the whole thing. And and I and uh, her dad was like, "Listen, I'll take you up to the uh, to the ballroom. We, we can go take a tour." This is like eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock at night. And I'm like, "Uh, -uh fuck that. Uh, uh. I'm going there. <laughs> it is noon. It is bright outside." And, oh uh, man, <laughs> Kristen must be rolling, no. <laughs> over laughing. She thinks <laughs> this is, she's like, "We got him so good. No, <laughs> he bought no, no, no. all of it." 
No, no, Did no. you send them to the YouTube video, those kids that we told to do like a year ago? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just just for today. Yes. <laughs> they set it up, Dustin. It's the most elaborate prank. No, it was an earlier prank they did on the kids. So. Oh, clearly, yeah, absolutely. Yes. All right, so, okay. so Chad, tell, tell us your ghost story. Um, well, first of all, April's parents' house was haunted for years. Like, they have some of those the most freaky stories, and I've been in there, dude, and it's, like, I've stayed a lot of nights at April's parents' house, and uh, it's not like bad anymore. Like the one living in now. Yeah. Okay. But all her, uh, like all the kids moved away. Um, April has two brothers. Uh, they both moved away, and then April moved away, and like it stopped. Uh -huh. But like, okay, when I used to stay over there, like before they even told me stories about the stuff that had happened, or whatever, I I would just get this really just horrible feeling, like at certain times, you know, and like, um, okay, That's so what everyone says they say you get a really weird. feeling. Yeah, I had this. So they they had it for a really long time, and I'm not like a huge like, oh my god, ghosts everywhere yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, but like, dude, it's it's crazy. Like Joe. It was April's, uh, I guess it's, it's the middle child of the family. And um, when he tells the story, like, every time he talks about it, like, all the hairs on his arms and neck go up. Like, because sure. he, he remembers it. And uh, he saw a little girl in a white dress because he thought it was April. He was at the bottom of the stairs. And apparently April was downstairs and falling asleep on the couch. And he was, like, off doing something and, like, looks up at the stairs and sees this little girl in a white dress or whatever. And he's like, what are you doing? You know, he's like, April, you know, says that. And then she walks in from the side and is like, what? You know, she was up on the couch, you know, right. and he's like, I mean, literally, when he, you should see him tell the story. How, like, I how mean, far like, away was she, the, the ghost from? from he, she was at, the, it was at the top of the stairs. So, so like, he was, he, was, he was at the base? So he was at the so bottom of the stairs. Like, he was walking by and saw and looked up. So and, probably you know, like eight like, feet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so it was, that was pretty, there was that. And then um, they had another time when there's a, there was a cup on the very center of uh, the table. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they're all sitting there. And no joke, they, they watched the cup get knocked over and fall on the floor and break, right? And they thought it was the cat, right? Mm -hmm. And their cat was on the couch next to him. Huh. So there, that was um, two of the things. The freakiest thing that happened to me when I was there uh, was, okay, so April and I, right after we finished watching The Sopranos, you know, there's the, the Journey Don't Stop Believing song that plays at the end and okay. disappoints everybody. That song, like, followed us everywhere, right? And we would joke about it all the time uh because like we i mean it was the weirdest thing so every time we go into a building they're playing it so then so and obviously it's a popular song but sure. we, we just joked around how the song follows us around well april's parents had emptied their attic and for like a year all that stuff was in their upstairs game room just there so april and i decide uh like we were looking for something in one corner i mean this is a huge game room okay so we haven't touched anything in the other side and it's been sitting there for a year or whatever we're looking through this one side and we start hearing don't stop believing uh-huh Okay, and like April and I look at each other, and we, you know, we go downstairs, and her parents don't have the TV on or anything. We're like, "What the hell?" So we go back upstairs, and we still hear. It. So we, we're going towards the sound. We start rummaging around through uh, all the crap that's in there and stuff. Then a hand pops no, out. You know? No, and there is a stereo playing "Don't Stop Believing," not plugged in. Really? And that shit has been sitting there for like a year, and it's a really old stereo. So God only knows how long it was in the attic. Now I did check for batteries, and there were batteries in there. But they were, like, all corroded and stuff. And it, that was the weirdest thing for me because, like, nothing fell over there. There was no, like... It just started playing? It just started playing, and it was that song. God, that's weird. So, like, what, there, was there any sort of explanation as to why the house, like, was there any sort of deaths in the house or anything like not that? that? Not that we know of. Um, April's brothers stop? know a lot more about, like, everything. They have other stories that they can tell, but... Uh, but like, why, why did it just stop? I don't know. Did they have any sort of... Uh, I don't know. All the kids moved away and stuff. Yeah, okay. That's but, uh, it's really bizarre. It, why is it always somebody in a white dress? You know? I don't know. That is pretty funny. Probably because all the old timey, like the old, you know, they had the nightgowns and stuff. Justin, Justin you obviously uh, have a hard time believing this just, just well, by your reaction. And I, stuff. I have one story. This one time. Well, Shut I, up. <laughs> no. I've had a few girlfriends, right? And uh, there was this one who was really into pottery <laughs> and everything, right? So we do pottery and stuff together. And then one day I died and came back as Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> And that was the only way I could communicate with her. <laughs> so we communicated, and I got to tell her I love her for one last time. I hate you, Dustin. Um, no, uh, and my own personal experience, <laughs> yep. probably like the freakiest thing. Then this could have really freaky that I was Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. Uh, I was driving to my friend Sam's house, and uh, he lived out in Shady Shores. And have you ever been up like the back ways to Shady Shores? It's like these like little crappy roads, uh -huh. and it's like it's like midnight, and I'm sure. heading back over there. So I'm driving on this back road, and you know everything's good. And I'm driving, and I look in my rearview mirror, and I, sh I swear to God to this day, there was, like, a perfect silhouette of, like, a person in my back seat. So much so, oh, sorry, I get, like, 
Dude, someone should. I slammed. Chad just got chills. I did, literally. dude. I I slammed my brakes and turned back. Like I mean, like turn back to like just go swing it. I don't know. I just like freak, you know. And then yeah. there's nothing there, you know, anything like that. And I was just like, dude, I was so freaked out. And like, sure. I mean, maybe it could have been Shadow like playing weird to make like I don't know, dude. But I'm normally not like, oh look, that's a person. That's the you know yeah, like yeah, yeah. that's, that's like freaky. Only I can time. actually see ghosts, and I <laughs> Shut uh, up. I hunt I hunt them. Like sometimes they have unsolved things. Well, in their so, let's do a ghost hunters. And uh, no, let's do no. Come on, going Don't around do, town, I, I putting his hand that. into people's chests and crushing them. It, it's, Hold on, okay. I, I, I have zero interest in that. I okay, see, like, you want to go to every haunted house to purposely listen, and, and, be and, scared, and, and that's just it. I love haunted houses, but I don't want anything to do with with real haunted stuff, dude. None of that. We've got cameras. Let's do this. Listen, this will be you, so you, much fun. You guys do it. I'm. You want to do it, Dustin? Sure. All right, I'll ask Ben. I'm totally down. Yeah, do it. Going going to the Adolphus. Is that what you're talking about? I don't care. Wherever. We'll look up haunted places or something there, there's, like that. There's, if you look online, there's a lot of haunted places in Dallas. <laughs> Craig looks all nervous right now. <laughs> just like I'm just saying, you guys do it because I would love to see your re- see the results and see exactly what it's like. Because, I mean, that stuff really like freaks me out. If there's one thing that you know freaks me out. It's kittens and that. No, no, <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I'm no, just kidding. Uh, but the, the whole ghost ghost thing is really is weird to me. So, but I'm interested. Why don't you believe in that stuff? Or are you you do you, I don't know if you believe it or you just think the words just sound ridiculous. Well, I did for a while, and then uh, I used to like mess with ghosts and stuff, right? But then one God. time, it Damn got. It. Why pissed. are you being like this? It got pissed, right? And it, like bit my girlfriend, and then she like Guessed went it. crazy. Oh my she God. went right. crazy. Whatever. <laughs> okay, that is haunted ghost stories. Unless you guys want to talk about the ghost shows. I hope I hope some ghost haunts you. I, yeah. I don't do. wish that on somebody. Yeah, I do. We put that jinx on you. You're gonna get your ass haunted. You, 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 you're gonna get haunted by some old lady in white. Yes. Oh man, and then it's my girlfriend's your sister's dreams. baby. Like something weird was going on there. <laughs> Her name is Rosemary, right? Oh my gosh. All right, whatever. So there's uh, G ones. I'm serious. If you've had any sort of brushes with hauntedness, post your comments uh, below. I definitely want to hear what you guys uh, have had happen to you. If not, if you're not a believer, then then post them below. Uh, you know, I, I would love to hear why. Unlike how you know, Destin will just recite. The I story told you of stories about my personal life. <laughs> <Greg>. <laughs> uh, how All dare right. you? <laughs> All right. All Open right. my heart and you open the script life. to ghosts in your movie soul. Patrick Swayze and Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. I've never seen anymore. such movies. <laughs> if you don't believe. All right. Uh, so there you go. The there, there's, there's hauntedness. Let's move. Let's make the uh, move real quick uh, to some funny stuff. Okay. Wasn't that Destin a, has just attempted to be funny for the last 15 minutes. Wasn't there that other time when, like, you died and then you had to say that guy's name three times and then he came and... Beetlejuice, right? Helped you get... Uh, helped you move on? All right. Okay. All right, but right now... Actually, it was my mom who died. It's oh, time for... Died. The Side Scroller News Desk. Hit the music. music. <laughs> Dad, you're... I was reading stuff. All right. I'm so so disappointed, Dustin. I, th- uh, I thought you'd take it. Seriously. Way to bring down the ghost stories, Dustin. All right, what do you I got? I took it very seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so what do we got? Oh, oh wait, that's me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got, Greg? What well, do you got, I'll Dustin? tell you. All right. Uh, what is the worst thing you guys did when you were 12 years old? I don't know. When you were a kid. Did you guys ever get a ticket? I was 12? Yeah. Probably. I got a ticket when, well, yes, you were skateboarding and stuff. Right? <laughs> I, I got a ticket when I was like 14 for driving a little mini bike around. I, think I drank around. alcohol when I was about that age. Jeez, boozer. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, golly. All right. Well, this kid stole his parents' car with his buddies and took yeah. a joyride and for 100 mile an hour, 100 miles an hour Jesus. Uh, in Nebraska. Which is, you know, land of nothing. So real man would have went 110. Just saying. <laughs> well, this thing he's not. He's 12. He's not a man. Was he <laughs> trying to recreate the intro to Star Trek, in the newest movie? <laughs> he's not a he's not a man by <laughs> any standards. Not even Jewish standards, because you get you're 13 and you're a man in Jewish standards. So. Did he swing it off a cliff? Uh, I, I guess that's a Star Trek reference that I'm not getting. Did you not see the new Star Trek? No, movie? I did not. I heard it's good though. Oh my god, it's amazing. Okay, well, I'm not even a huge Star Trek fan. It's on Netflix. It's a lot. Right, well, maybe we'll watch it someday. But right now we're talking about this kid whose obviously identity is not revealed. Uh, because he's a minor. Is he a ghost? Uh, no, he's not a ghost. He was driving, <laughs> uh, driving in his. Now he is a ghost. <laughs> driving in his parents' SUV along with three passengers, ages 12 and 13. Oh, uh, God. When, it, when an officer attempted to pull them over because he thought he was, he thought they were uh, uh, drunk and driving. The car was haunted. Okay, haunted. <laughs> Stop it. All right. Uh, but, but really, it was just night <laughs> riding. Drunk and driving. 
and he pulled him over and he was like in shock, right? So he pulled him over and the kids they, the kids tried to get away. That's what got that's what got up to 100 miles an hour. Say, yeah. Kid steals a car and he's going 100, but oh, here's the here's the cops. I better pull over. Hits no, his he, blinker and goes in. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, when when, they, when he did get pulled over, the kid was like uh, the kid was heard asking on the dashboard on the uh, dash cam video if he's going to be sent to juvenile hall. Um, but he said the children quickly admitted why they why they fled from police. Um, they said they were just trying to beat the cop home so they wouldn't get in trouble. So they, they, <laughs> they could just pull in and then run inside and then they couldn't get in trouble. Which, you know, at a 12 year old, I guess that logic is pretty good. But, <laughs> hmm. Anyways, the kid was uh, cited for driving out without a license, operating a motor, uh, and operating a motor vehicle without authorization, uh, and willful and reckless driving at 12. Plus, years he was old. drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. Wow. Pretty good stuff. Right? Props to that kid. Way to start your life off right, man. All right. Uh, now let's go to Eugene, Oregon. Uh, what's the best name you've ever heard? Eugene. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I th- you know, you think about like... Uh, Emmanuel. What's the one that Homer Simpson had? Uh, Max Powers. Max Powers. That's pretty good, right? It's the name that you want to touch, but you mustn't touch it. Well, this guy changed his name. Oh, like a real name. Uh, <laughs> this guy changed his name from Doug Smith to Captain Awesome. <laughs> In real well, life. he went from like the most generic name ever. Hi, I'm Doug Smith. Yes. <laughs> like, uh, the unemployed, the unemployed Eugene cabinet installer said he found it funny um, <laughs> when he saw uh, the on NBC's hit television show Chuck. Uh, there was some sort of reference. Captain to, Awesome. Yeah. To Captain Awesome. So uh, he went in and he uh, formally changed his name. He could have at least been original. He went into uh, yeah, I know. He went into the uh, county judge who questioned his seriousness, and the judge uh, granted the request. Made him swear he wasn't changing his name for fraudulent reasons. Now, here's the best part about it, though. Guess he the, was changing. Guess how he signs his name. How? Oh. <laughs> yes. He signed the judge. See, awesome. The judge also allowed him to sign his name as right arrow, smiley face, left arrow. <laughs> so it's just two arrows pointing at a smiley face. For being <laughs> awesome? <laughs> Wow. That's just his signature. That's amazing. So uh, he says his bank, however, didn't allow it, allow that because it's too easy to forge. But still. <laughs> so at his bank, he has the sign as Captain Awesome. Yes. So okay. isn't that great stuff, though? That's that amazing. That's insane. Yeah, well, the thing is, like, I don't know. He could have at least been original. He didn't have to take off the show Chuck. Whatever. Yeah, that's true. If you're going to do something like that, you might as well come up with something. Which, really by good. the way, April watches Chuck in, like, the beginning. Okay, it was kind of interesting. Good lord, the writing is horrible in that show. Never seen it. It's awful now. All right. Now, let's go to Sheboygan, Wisconsin, I know where that is. Do you? How close were you when you lived up there? I was in Wisconsin. Oh, so uh, neighbors. Yep. Yep. (laughs) With all your cows and stuff. Mm -hmm. And And cheese. cheese. Knew that was coming. That's right. (laughs) All right. So a Wisconsin woman was arrested after she allegedly bit (laughs) half of her 79-year-old husband's tongue off during a kiss. Ah. So her husband is 79 years old. It doesn't say how old the woman is, uh, but her husband went in for a kiss, um, and his her wife Jim went yoink and uh, bit off half his tongue. And he tried to call the cops. Could have been worse. It's true. Uh, <laughs> tried to call the cops, but they couldn't understand what he was saying because he didn't have a tongue. <laughs> his mouth was filled with blood. Um, that is horrifying. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty Continue. awful. Continue. They had been singing Christmas carols on Monday night and decided to go to bed. According to police, the man went to go kiss his wife goodnight, and she bit off his tongue. You were on key, so you will never <laughs> sing again. <laughs> now, here's the deal, though. When the cops showed up, the wife was like, Leave coppers and she tossed coffee at them. <laughs> really? She, yeah. Get out of here, coppers. Yeah. Here's, here's some hot coffee. <laughs> Anyways, um, so the man said he didn't want his wife arrested. She ended up uh, getting t- getting taken in anyways. Uh, Wait, he was, said he didn't want her arrested? Yeah. I guess God, it, what is wrong with people? He just really loved his wife more than he loved his tongue. That's ridiculous. Fuck that. People, if someone is crazy as shit, you... They need to go to jail for shit like that, okay? I agree. I agree. We should get some help. <clears throat> yeah. Wisconsin people are nuts. That's what I've learned. You Seriously. and Jared included. Mm. Nah. <laughs> Not believing in ghosts. We'll see if Jared believes yeah. in ghosts. Jared will. Because he's cool. <laughs> Look, I told you guys, like, serious stories about my life. And you're funny. I hate you. You're really offending me. Yeah. Okay. You don't believe him. You Got offend it. me. All right. Fine, Someone fine, haunt fine. his ass. Now let's go. Uh, <laughs> that's the end of the news desk. So let's move on to forum questions. All right. Chad. G1 Shotokan War wants to know 
Hey, Craig. Hey. I attended PAX in Seattle this summer and had the honor of meeting you, Chad, and Jose. Oh, that was Aww. good times. Thanks. I also went to the GT panel, which you and several other participants took part in. Mm -hmm. My question is, do you see ScrewTech having its own panel one day at an event as large as PAX Prime? Uh, potentially. We'll see. You know, I think it's just, it's just a matter of us uh, kind of organizing it ahead of time. And We're kind of bad about effort. that. Yeah. You know, it, when it comes to organizing other events outside of our own, it's tough to... Uh, everything on the same page have time you'd be surprised how many events we go to that we realize like two weeks in advance that we should be going to them yeah so then we make it happen yeah as organized as screw tag may seem it's just a big clusterfuck <laughs> <laughs> there uh, we go there you go pulling back the curtain a little too much there <laughs> all right no i'm just kidding we're very organized but yeah that'd be mm. cool to do we always yeah. like to do panels. Like we'll have a panel at Magfest. We've got two. I we think. got two panels at Magfest. By the way, yes. If you are going to Magfest, make sure you guys say hi to us. Uh, we look forward to seeing everybody there. Uh, we'll have two panels. Uh, one will be uh, I will be on a panel by myself talking about uh, turning your website into a business, which should be fun. Which usually just turns into talking about video games and such. Mm. Your which brings us to our next which panel. Which brings us yes, the next panel, uh, appropriately named "Video Games: Yes or No," uh, where Jared, myself, and Chad will be on the panel. And talking about video games and uh, if we like them or not. So and hopefully being funny. And hopefully, depending on what day it is, I won't have lost my voice by then. Pretty much just kicking we'll it old school, man. Yep. All right. Uh, what else? Let's see. Round Gamer asks, how did the concept for Death Battle come about? Like, we were watching Deadly, like were you watching Deadliest Warrior and thought to replace the Warriors with video game characters? All right, here's the deal with that. Ben, like, way back when, this was like a year ago. Like, December is when he had the idea, I think. Uh, last December. And uh, he, it was originally called Who Would Win? Yeah. And he put together, uh, actually, the first episode of Death Battle now, which was Samus versus Boba Fett. He used the sprites, scripted it out. And this is something he, he kind of had... It was well, this was actually in, put in place before Metal Gear Ben was done. Right. Yeah, this was before. This was, was like like two episodes into Metal Gear Ben. Ben put together this pilot. And then the just show. didn't have time. Cause it, well, I was like, dude, Metal yeah, Gear Ben. Like, you need to finish Metal Gear Ben first before you take yep. on anything else, because Metal Gear Ben is going to take up all your time. And then Death Battle... Then we were like, well, who would win is kind of the lamest name in the world. So <laughs> so we were thinking of a better name. Death Battle! Uh, that's when Death Battle got thrown, in, thrown into the... That was more recent, the name change. Yeah, yeah the name change much. was more recent. Yeah, yeah but... Uh, yeah, so Ben was the uh, the conceptual mind behind yep. Death Yeah, Battle. he just like was like, hey, I want to do a show that's kind of like Deadliest Warrior, I guess, but with video game characters. And I can animate all the sprites and make them fight and do a whole bunch of research. He does an insane amount of research. It's ridiculous. Yes, yes. As you can tell by the... Uh, the lead-in to those things. Yeah. Anyway, so that's how that came about. Good times. Stuttering Craig fan number. Lots of numbers after that. Wants to know. Okay, you say that you care about the community and the G1s a lot. My question is, is that true empathy that stems from a passionate love for all people unselfishly? Or is this a simple good business motto to ensure that you have an established viewer base where our worth as a contributing member of the community is only measured by view count and ad revenue as a result of that? That's actually hilarious. I know. Uh, no, it is genuine. Like, I think if you come to our, uh, if you come to any event that we're at, whether we are a part of that event or not, uh, we genuinely care about you guys, and we genuinely don't just think of you as figures and numbers, which is uh, amazing. You should see the amount of uh, fan art and fan mail and such we have around the office, because we genuinely care about you guys. So Yeah, we love it. I can't see the script that we Game love Trailers and Revision 3 sent us to answer this question. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. Can, you, can you turn your computer a little, Craig, <laughs> so I can right. read it, read my part? part I'm sorry, I forgot about that. You're yeah. supposed to say, yes, we love them. No, oh, yeah, we, yes, yes, we love them. No. In, in addition, I mean, we no, know... I, I care about the community, for sure. <laughs> in addition, we know... <laughs> sorry. That sounded so condescending. No, seriously, I care about them. I am, like, falling oh. asleep at the mic. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jeez. How do you really feel about that? Yeah, no, no I'm just tired because I didn't sleep very well. I didn't either. I was up playing Cataclysm, but I'm... Yeah. <laughs> Chad, but, no, uh, the community is really important, and, like, the interaction that they give us on the website is great. If, yeah. if we didn't, you know. look... We know we can't do what we do without you guys, you yeah. know? So we appreciate the hell out of it, the thing is, and we love you all. We get that Screw Attack wouldn't exist if you guys didn't come to the site. We get that. But ultimately, you know, Screw Attack is here to... You know, be a, a, a central destination for for gamers to come to. Yeah, know? we're gamers. And, and we talk about stuff. Yeah, exactly, and, and <laughs> we we do we do game days and such with you guys because we genuinely care about you guys. We genuinely appreciate. And we genuinely value people as a whole who aren't douchebags. Mm. But if you're a douchebag, fuck you. <laughs> On that note, like it's not like I get paid more when I'm on Twitter or whatever, and I'm like, hey, you guys want to play some games? You yeah. Know, so. 
Exactly. Yeah. Good times. All right. Asai Nero Tran wants to know, at what point uh, did you realize that you were a gamer? Did it happen all of a sudden, or did you just become one over the course of time and didn't really take note of it? You know, for me, I think it, it came probably around fourth grade when uh, I was, but no, I would say earlier than that, probably third grade, second grade, third grade, when, when I would bring my games to school just to show them to kids. You know, I would bring my NES. Metroid, boom, we can't play it, but it's in my hand. Well, look, the thing <laughs> look is, at it. After, after school, kids would go to, like, daycare and such, right? Uh-huh. And they, you know, because they couldn't just go home. So and you I, went to your daycare? The, no, no, <laughs> I, I, I didn't go to Nintendo. daycare. But I remember this kid, Chris Tavis was his name. Chris okay. Tavis. He had, uh, he, we would always talk about games. We weren't friends or anything, but, but the common bond was video games. I yeah. always thought of him as, as, like, a gamer. And we never hung out. But we always talked about video games, and he would bring he would bring games to school so we could play them after school at daycare because they had an NES. So, I think that's probably about the time. I mean, I always enjoyed games, but I never really. I mean, gamer was it's kind of a, I guess it's somewhat of a moderate recent term. You know? I guess well, that's the thing. Like for me, it was like I I've always played games avidly. I've always had like two really big interests in my life, and that's skating and video games. Mm-hmm. And uh, so there's always been this like balance between them. And I guess like I didn't even know. Gamer was like a social category for like the longest yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Know? I guess I always, I always consider myself a skater, you know, or whatever. But then yeah. like, I mean, I've always been a gamer. Yeah, so. I, I think, and I think it's really, I think it's really narrow-minded to say, you know, I'm just a gamer or I'm oh, just yeah. a this, you know. Mm. So I'm a gamer and you're not. Well, fuck you, you know. <laughs> I think I think it's really narrow-minded and really shallow. Uh, you know, like I like sports too. Yeah. Most. Typical gamers don't like sports. Most typical sports guys, jocks, don't like games. I was, yeah. uh, Madden and such, I was right? a comic book collector first and a gamer second. Oh, what kinda. a dork. So. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I, and I don't believe in ghosts. Well, and, and there's a lot of I things. Didn't say, I didn't say it. Stories. <laughs> and I told stories. I think there's a lot of things that we bleed. We all shared. There's a lot <laughs> of things that bleed moment. into each other. A lot of categories. If you're like a comic book, in a comic books, you, you also bleed into games, you know? Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of things that don't typically go together, you know? Uh, you won't find a guy on the you know playing football out there playing Donkey Kong Country Returns. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, you play. I can tell you. I remember the incident. I don't play football. That I realized. <laughs> you played like two weeks ago. I know. Oh. <laughs> that I realized I was a gamer. I used to work at Blockbuster, and it had a game rush in it. So it was Blockbuster Game Rush. And when I knew way more about games than like pretty much everybody else, and then got promoted up to running the game side. That's when go. I knew. Thank I was you. like, oh okay. What about you, Dustin? Probably after high school, I was in denial for the most part. Then I started realizing I play a lot of freaking video games, <laughs> and I knew a lot more than everybody else. So. Probably, I think the term gamer really came about probably about the time the internet really started picking up. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense, because that's how a lot of social terms and... And when people started making money off of it. What like meaning? Professional, professional gamer. Like, what do you do? Oh, you yeah, know, yeah, I'm yeah. a professional gamer. Sure, so, sure. like... Sure. Which was, you know, early 2000s, I guess, right? I, I guess. That's when MLG really kind of started picking up. Technically, you could go back to the stuff. pinball wizards or like Billy yeah, Mitchell's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess you could say that for sure. Oh yeah, there was a big craze back then, and then it died, and Walter Day is still stuck in it. Hey, <laughs> I love Walter. I love Walter. Walter's awesome. Yeah, Walter's a great. I wonder, guy. Oh, I wonder if he'll be at Magfest. Next? He usually is. Next time. Like, yeah, I can't wait for. If he is, I, I'd love to shake his hand, give him a hug again. He's a good guy. All right. Um, next is relationship time. All right, relationship time. Big hit last week. Let's get into it. Yeah. Uh, it's now time for Chad's relationship time. Bam, 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 bam. There's the This is supposed to be way sexier than that. It sounded like Craig's going to rape you, so I'm sorry. Um, Craig, pick one of the two. I couldn't here, decide. Bitch. I'll take this one. Uh, one start reading fail. one. Nook a cola, the second one. Okay. So there's this girl I know since you're. Uh, this Nuka is a cola? Nuka cola. Nuka cola. <laughs> There you go. What is it? <laughs> so there's a girl. Oh. There's a girl he's known for years, but in the last few years, uh, he started to know her better, and uh, she started to talk with me because we became friends. And uh, after time, I had a crush on her. The problem is that my friend also had a crush on her, but I didn't know. After a time, he asked her out, and she became his girlfriend. Now my friend left Switzerland a year ago uh, to go to America, and he asked me to take care of her. Now I'm spending a lot of time with her, and my feelings for her are getting stronger. But I know she loves him so much because she's always telling me about it. He's like, I feel like I have no chance right now. So my question is, should I wait until she breaks up with him, or should I just try and forget her and be a good friend? Yeah, I, I any, put this. Do you have any spare socks laying around the house? Because there's a good way to handle this <laughs> and a bad way to handle this. Dude, th- I, yeah, we put this on here. Under no circumstances do you go after her. Your friend will hate you. 
it will be awkward. And even if something happens between you and her, she's going to feel guilty about it. Your best bet is to just be a good friend and find somebody else. There's a phrase. How does it go? Oh, sorry. Hoes before bros. No, other way around. Bros before hoes. How do you screw that one up? <laughs> sorry. Bros before hoes. Uh, yeah. That is how it goes. Now, uh, speaking from experience, I can know that I've had a friend uh, who has gone behind my back before and uh, chosen the hoe over the bro. Uh, I have also... And when you say it's okay, it's a lie. Even if your friends, like, even if they broke up, and you're, I promise you, your friend does not want you dating her. No, for sure. And, and it's something you don't get over. As, as the friend who had his, who was, you know, who, uh, who had the, even when the girl's totally out of the equation, it's something you don't get over. I mean, there's huge trust issues there, yep. you know? It's something, uh, and uh, I, I can speak for me, me personally, you know? Uh, and, um, you know, this is, it's an occasion that happened, you know? Uh, I had, a friend who was engaged at the time, who, whose uh, now wife came on to me, and I was like, no, <laughs> uh-uh, no, sir. And and I pushed that, and I batted that away like a bad habit, you know? So, you know, that, that stay away, dude. Stay definitely, away. definitely stay away. Stay away. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. All right, cool. We're going to go for the other ones here, because I wanted to help this kid out, too. All right. This is from Middleman97. I'm having some girl trouble. There's a ghoul at my school that I really like. I said ghoul, but, you know, girl. Uh, I used to be able to talk to her very easily, (laughs) but recently I've had a lot of trouble talking to her. She claims she doesn't like anyone in our school, but I'm afraid she wouldn't want to date me, and I don't want to make uh, anything awkward. But there's another problem. Her best friend likes me. Now, I don't like her back, but I'm really good friends with her, and I don't want to make everything weird. Yeah, that's why I wanted to answer this. Weird and... uh, if I end up dating her friend, uh, and I end up dating her friend, should I risk losing both friends and ask her out, or just yep. move on with being friends? No, how, how, no. How, how, ask girl A if she wants to go something, on a date. Something no. to um, something to uh, include on these on these foreign questions. Include your age, because th- that actually he's, he did. He's in eighth grade. Okay, which is okay. Okay. Ask girl A on a date. If uh, she says no and it gets weird, exercise them from your life. See, I disagree. If I can tell you right now that if if her friend likes you, no matter what, don't even put yourself into that position. I mean, like, because you know how it is. Like, if they're friends and her friend likes him, but he likes her, you know, it's there's no way it'll work. Here's a bigger question. She's not interested a- in the friend, though. And this is 100% honest. He's friends with her. He, this is, okay, you're in eighth grade. Right? Yeah. Are you going to the same school next year? Are you going to the same <laughs> oh, high school? Oh, God. I'm being, I'm being serious. Yeah, that's why I'm like, you're in eighth grade? Go I mean, for I mean, it. Look, Who cares? Y- you are in eighth grade. It could be the love of your life. Okay, let's be honest. You guys are heartless. <laughs> Maybe. But, but in eighth grade, you shouldn't be worrying about anything that you that you don't need to be worrying about, if you catch my drift, right? In eighth grade, you should be worrying about holding hands and just hanging out and going to movies and stuff like that. That's what he's talking right? about. Well, you know, so, so there's really no, yeah, there's friendships and stuff. I say if you're not going to the same school next year, go ahead and ask her out. And if, if it's something to where you think that it could hurt a relationship with a friend that you value or if it's just something that, if it's just like a you know i'm gonna use this term and i don't mean it but like a throwaway friend or like an acquaintance you know someone you don't hang out with on the weekends or hang out with in your spare time you know someone you just know from school and you consider they're your friends see he says he doesn't the girl who likes him he doesn't like but he's really good friends with her uh uh-huh. that's why I'm, that's why i'm like the girl who likes the okay. girl him. the girl who likes, likes the boy him. boy yeah. likes other girl yeah right so Go Bo- on, listen. If Boys you, if, should go for the other girl. If you girl. don't like her, if you don't like the girl who likes you, then you can't. You, you can't her. force her to to like you. You know, or you, you, you can't. You can't like force her. yourself to like her. You know, and if the other girl doesn't like you, you can't force her to like you. It, the underlying theme to everything we're gonna tell you, whenever we answer, uh, when, whenever we answer a uh, relationship question, is be honest. Yeah. Yep. My personal advice would be: you're an eighth grade dude. It's cool. Just keep both as friends. You'll find somebody else. Uh, don't throw yourself in the drama because no, if she true. said because if you, if you ask this chick out and you start dating her and everything works out the friend there's always going to be the third wheel drama and then she's going to make her friend feel guilty and something will happen and it will end you that's true very true <laughs> so. no true all right what else that was it oh, that's for, cool. except for birthdays fire away birthdays well first of all last week apparently i missed mandy 96 and oh, she's super man. awesome she's going to send us all that candy yeah so, happy birthday to you. I'm sorry, I forgot last week. And the candy's delicious. We mm. ate all the Jelly Bellies first. I'm still going. 
Yeah, there's still a lot left. Right. All right. Uh, next one is Aaron Romero Jr. Brian Baker has a birthday this Whoa. week. Whoa. He's Freelance Brian the intern. Inter- yeah. With a birthday. Hey. He's like, what's going on? Now? Jared looked confused. All right. All right. And then uh, we've got Kenny Lung, who is Rad Kenster. That's his G1 name. And then Nicole Valancourt. All have birthdays. So happy birthday Nikki to you Valencourt. all. Nikki Valancourt. How do I know that name? Ni- Nicole. No, Nick. No, you're thinking, I, oh. Nikki Valancourt is a real name. Uh, it, maybe it's a character. I'm thinking Vicky Valancourt. Yeah, what's that from? What's that What's that from? Uh, I, whatever. Anyway. I don't know what the hell you guys are talking about. It's from about. a movie or something, a character. Is there a ghost like, in the movie? Vicky Valancourt. I'm thinking <laughs> Billy Madison or Happy Gilmore or something. Dude, that's... Anyways, Google it. All right, so there you go. That is the uh, that is foreign questions for this week, and thus concludes side chillers uh, for Screwtech.com. What do we got? I don't know. <laughs> Until next time. Until right. next time. All it's right, a mystery. Uh, so don't forget, we do have a new Talking Classics this week. Uh, make sure you are promoting Death Battle and getting it out there because it's an awesome series. People need to watch it. Saggy's all next week, and Tester Com- Commentary coming up this Friday. It what? was an Adam Sandler movie, Waterboy. Th- there you go. Vicky Valancourt, she likes me back, and she showed me her boobies, and I like them too. <laughs> when, there we go. When did Billy Madison become a hobo? No, right. no, that was, talked in the movie. Yeah, yeah it was Waterboy. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so until next week, hey, I'm Sutter and Craig. I'm Daily Destin. And I'm Chad. For Science Scholars on ScrewAttack.com. Bye-bye. Bye.